Being a chef means long hours, long days in the kitchen, but when we're finally getting off, we want to go to a place that's super fun, relaxing, has delicious food, great cocktails, good wine list, but overall, just easy. Two of my favorites for that are Elro and Winnie's. Let's go check them out. So we're at the corner of Genesee and Fairview in the middle of Montrose. One of the most talented chefs I've ever met. Terrence Gallivan, restaurant is called Elro. It's named after his, his daughter and his son. Pizza, crudos, cocktails with that. Let's go. <laughs> Terrence Gallivan, Ceci with Gardner, sitting at Elro, your new spot. Yep, welcome. Thanks for coming. Seth, I wanted to have you here today, too, because I, I think, you know, I want to talk about the story of Elro. We'll, we'll get into that. But, like, what got you here? And I think that the two of you having met years ago and having worked together is kind of how you came to Houston. Yep. And so where did you guys meet? We were both on the opening team of Gordon Ramsay's restaurant when he came stateside to open. But like you didn't know each other before, you just got yeah, hired, you yeah. got hired. And yeah, you we just became like kind of fast friends. Him and I always talked about doing something together. So we did like this pop-up. It was supposed to be this kind of just one-off thing and it was really fun, really popular. And we just basically looked at each other and said, like, let's give it a go here in Houston. Between the two of us and our wives, we're gonna sit down and like, you know, hands in the sun, gonna give it a year. Let's see. If it works out, great. If it doesn't, then we'll, figure we'll, it out. we'll try something else new. And, and so if feel the good. restaurant that eventually would become Pass and Provisions, if that hadn't worked out, we were like, this was a fun try, but let's stay friends, move on. And we got it done and, you know, had the, the ride of a life for seven years over there. So it, it was a lot of fun. Um, go ahead and say this out that I believe that you two are the smartest cooks I've ever met. I would agree with that. <laughs> so after PNP, you headed out to Marfa. Yep. And started a distillery. Yes. You know, after PNP closed, we were, I think, both pretty burned out. <laughs> I mean, Seth already had like the distillery thing kind of in the works. I was just kind of like ready to just take some time off and it's really just kind of be family and took that time <laughs> off to create pizzas for a year, then you did a good job on that one, man. <laughs> It's only so much like menu testing you can do in your home oven, but yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 the kids enjoyed it, which is nice. So. Elro's philosophy in food is based into small plates of crudo, like cured or smoked or raw fish yep. components. It's, everything's super fresh and it's coming to the back door every day. And you know, so it's that part of it's really fun. This is our snapper. This is probably our, our simplest dish. Uh, just all the fish gets a, some sort of cure on it briefly so we cure this just a little bit of like a, like a salt and sugar brine braid like maybe five minutes just to kind of just give it a little bit of seasoning um, and then our castle castle olives uh, pickled mango puree some fresh mango fresno chilies and cilantro and then we just dress it with like a simple lime and shoyu vinaigrette this guy here is our tuna on toast i mean that looks our uh, house made sourdough bread which we bake daily and then we just basically make like a spicy tuna mayonnaise. So we, we, we call it Induya spice. We try to mimic that kind of ferment flavor of like an Induya sauce, like spreadable sausage, yeah. and kind of treat the, the tuna. That it is like, it's, it's almost like you're eating an Induya, like a seafood version. This guy here is our Kampachi. So we do a cold smoke on that. Gets a, a, a brief cure as well, or brine, I should say. And then um, smoke it in mesquite. Uh, we do a yuzu koshu vinaigrette, so like a spicy Japanese citrus chili paste, uh, a little bit of lime, show you on there as well. Olive oil, like a nice olive oil from California. Uh, toasted pumpkin seeds. Uh, that we add a little bit of squash, uh, both in puree and uh, in chip form, to just kind of give it a little more textures on the dish. And toasted pumpkin seeds. This is just like laying it all out and just dehydrating it. Yeah, yeah, simple. Yeah, just, I mean, just, I mean, it just hopefully has a little crunch to it. Hopefully, like, you know, we season it a little bit of lepo pepper and olive oil. But again, it's delicious. Keep it simple. Maybe you want to come in and just have a bunch of light, cold things. That's easily accomplished. You know, if you want to come in and have a sausage and a pizza and some fried, you know, risotto balls with some more of cheese inside, you can have that as well. Or you can have the whole package too. The fact that you're making not just all the pizza dough for here, because that's a, that's a huge, you're making all of your own breads too. For this as well? Yep, make the hoagie rolls in house, make the sourdough in house, just make the three doughs, but it's, it's um, the sourdough scrape. They're one of those things we've kind of dialed in pretty good. Flavors there, I think, and, um, People seem to appreciate it. So. That stuff pretty much just came out of the oven. Yep, yep. We, they, uh, 
Baker's here at 5 a.m. every day. What's the anatomy of this? So you got the bread, so sesame. We do a roasted garlic mayonnaise that we um, put on the bread itself. We do our house jardinara, which is like that uh, five-day fermented pickle, like vegetable pickle. And then there's aged provolone, mortadella, uh, hot copa, gabagool, <laughs> uh, shredded lettuce, tomato. That's it. I mean, that's try to keep it simple. And you know, not a lot of frills. Uh, just hopefully mm. it kind of speaks for itself. And That's the frill in itself, right? It's good. It's got like a nice crunch, and then it's like soft too. Like... Boy. Oh yeah. Looking at this pie right here on the interwebs, it's made me want to cry a little bit. <laughs> Why? Because I love mortadella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thought is it's like it eats like a sandwich. Is kind of how I thought about it. And then our tomato pie, which I mentioned earlier, tomato sauce, fresh tomatoes go down. And then uh, <laughs> the Calabrian chilies, breadcrumbs, and then fresh parm when it comes up. And this is probably my favorite pizza in town right now. Yeah. I mean, that's a good crust. That's everything about it, right? These go back to well thought through. Like, this is a sandwich. This is a little bit lighter for the season. This is like, there's, there's thought process into each one of them. I just want it to be a little bit unique enough for something different for people, but also like familiar. You know, we're in a house. So I want you to feel like you, you literally are in a house. So I want you to feel at home here and feel comfortable. If you can come here for like a date night, I also encourage you to come here and flip flops and t-shirt and hang out and you know, get a delicious cocktail, grab a beer, have some oysters, hang out. I, I agree just, with that. Yeah. Especially like this, uh, get out. Some cocktails. But I want to, that to me, is like heaven on a slice. That's a good bite right there. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I may have taken all the mortadella off of that pie. That's I just fine. put it on one legal. That's a legal move. Time to check out the cocktails. Walk me through real quick. Starting here at the Secret Garden. It is Irish whiskey, acabit, lille blanc, apple and fennel, a touch of absent, and lemon juice. This one's built for the crudo to pair with fish. Let's go with all the starters. Better watch out for that. Oh, yeah. All right. So, Marfa Spirit's Sotol. I love playing with extreme flavors. Hold up. What is Sotol? Sotol is a plant and the spirit. And I like to think about it if there's a spectrum of tequila and mezcal, Sotol kind of floats in between those. Sometimes they're very smoky, sometimes they're very like clean and um, refreshing. Great in margaritas, palomas. The original ranch water was made with Sotol. So we're crushing Thai basil here with some peppers, lime juice. That's a pizza, pizza drink right there. That is, that's, that's a, what we call a hammer. You can hammer those. What are we gonna get here? Salt and boca sausage, chicken, prosciutto, sage. Everything you would get in salt and boca in sausage form. Then that hoagie. I think Terrence does one of the best hoagies around. And we're gonna go to tuna on toast. Don't forget the crudos, lots of cold fish dishes, but the tuna on toast is a stellar one. Mortadella pizza for a pizza, pistachio, pesto, balsamic onions. That's what I'm talking about. And then at the end, a maraschino soft serve. Got this delicious chocolate magic shell on top of it. That's Elro on a great date night or a lunch with family. Now on to Winnie's. Cocktails on point. Food, delicious. Wings. All right, we got to talk about wings. Winnie is a person who pours shots at your grandma's house, has a great time, knows how to party, can dress it up if need be. You know, for, I think for us, that translates to not taking yourself too seriously and really just wanting to have a good time uh, and, and kind of hosting a party. We'd both spend a lot of time in fine dining, craft cocktails, like, we wanted to take all of those things that we had learned, but then make a place that like our friends would want to come on their day off. You could have named this Winnie's or Chef's Day Off, right? <laughs> because they're, everybody comes here on their like, day off and they're relaxing time because the food is, like that first time I sat up here at the bar right after you opened, my mind, I think I was back two days later, like mind blown. It's the food that you want to eat all the time, but done with execution that really works. And it's, you nailed it, right? Sure. 
And, and you guys have taken the sandwich, the sandwiches specifically, turned it on its side and made them really imaginative, creative, delicious. I think a lot of that we owe to COVID, you know? Give us two years of being trapped inside, <laughs> yeah. hungry, wanting to go to all these different places that you can't touch. I mean, when you guys first opened and you had the, like the braised beef po' boy with the Cool Ranch Doritos on it, I was like, I very rarely in my life want a braised beef for like po' boy, but the addition of the Cool Ranch Dorito was perfect. Out of the dishes, like what are your favorite things? Well, I, Benji nailed it, right? Shrimp po' boy, because you can't make something out of it that it isn't, right? So the bread still has to have a familiar, the right pull, the right density, it's still gotta make a mess, and if it doesn't, like, what are we even doing here? So we get our bread from New Orleans. Um, Leidenheimers? Yeah. Leidenheimers. There's a lot of po' boys. There's not a lot of really good po' boys. At simple execution, season your tomatoes, good pickles, mayonnaise good, all good the way to the too. end of the sandwich. Good tomatoes. The right size shrimp. I got stuck if you on go too tomato. big, you ruin. It, yeah, you can't have a 1620. <laughs> no. 3642s. And then you have to get into like what's the fallout factor. Yeah. Right. right. How many shrimp are gonna hit the table before I get exactly. done? That, so then I can pop them back in it like because my favorite is like eating a po' boy and then like one or two falls out and then you get to the point where it's like a little bit ready and you can just slip that thing right back in. That's done. Shredded cabbage. Shredded cabbage dressed with a Creole mustard vinaigrette. Pickles, tomatoes, Duke's mayo, and then our uh, our seafood dredge is a closely guarded secret that I'm gonna tell you the entirety of right now. So it's ground panko breadcrumbs, rice flour, regular flour, cornmeal, and then uh, we use Zatarain's crab boil seasoning. Kind of give it that, that boiled seafood flavor throughout. That's a lot of thought process. <laughs> it took us six months to make a burger. <laughs> that is actually true. All right, talk to me about burgers. So this is actually was the longest development, most contentious item on the menu. <laughs> Like, everybody's favorite burger is their childhood burger, and, like, all chefed up burgers are, like, some variation on a burger that you remember. And we just could not agree on it. So we went through, like, a truly nauseating amount of burger trials. Where we ended up, I was, like, very adamant that it should have that sort of, like, classic iceberg lettuce, tomato balance. It's an Oklahoma style burger, so that means we take white onions and we shave them super thin, throw them on the grill, take a ball of ground beef, put it down and smash it so that the burger smashes into the super thin cut onions and like you get a caramelization on the onions, you get the crispiness of the meat. Then from bottom to top, we have a um, sesame seed bun. This is a Mayo a poivre. <laughs> so we basically <laughs> make we basically make an a poivre sauce, like classic steakhouse, green peppercorns, brandy, uh, and then we mix it with Dukes. So that like kind of kind of knocked out the savory chefy steakhouse notes. Pickles, burger, American cheese, because as far as I'm concerned, that is the, the only cheese. cheese for a burger. That's like, it. not even up for discussion. I agree with that. Pickled onions, just because if you weren't getting enough onions from the first thing or enough pickle from the pickles. Tomato, shredded lettuce, and then a Serrano hamburger mustard. So basically, like... I'm, I'm, I'm okay with all of that. Sandwiches, ultimately, you're talking about ratios. This is a... That's a lot of flavor going on. I'm all right with that. I like the Oklahoma standpoint to it, too. Yeah. And this is your crunch wrap. Benji had been making crunch wraps for his kids at home. Again, COVID. Yeah. And so we reimagined the Popeye's Delta wrap as a crunch wrap. Again, introducing Cool Ranch Doritos to the equation. Uh, that thing has been our like most requested. We took it off the menu and we're immediately receiving threats via phone, internet, and social media. This is what you were cooking for your kids or what? Well, I just went through, I mean, it was COVID and I had a lot of time at home. And so I bought a pack of burrito wrappers and I was just like, everything's going in these. It kind of stands on the menu right now alone, apart from anything else. It's just one of the few things where 
it's a painful reminder of one time that Benji was right. <laughs> <laughs> Most people will say there's a better version at home of whatever they do, right? We kind of take that as a challenge here and play around with it and mess with it, because no one's ever had a fried chicken crunch wrap at nope. their house, nope. right? <laughs> and so they can't say this is like better than mom or grandma used to make, because nobody's grandma, I mean, unless their grandma was a hell of a cook, was messing or, around with or this Or like stuff. a really serious stoner. Yeah, <laughs> just way blows away all the expectations of a fried chicken sandwich to me. What's up with the wing? Why do I love it so much? It has nothing that it doesn't need to have, right? So we cure them uh, for 24 hours with salt and sugar, equal parts. Uh, and then we basically calm feed them. So 250 degrees for almost 18 minutes. Uh, they're cooked through. And then we flash fry them at the very end at 400 to just crisp everything. Every texture, every surface of the outside of that wing is crackly crunchy it's so and delicious. Good. And they hold up to the sauce as well. Wings. Wings. Boys. That looks like crispy heaven. <laughs> Classic hot. Classic hot. That looks hot. like lemon pepper wet. Lemon, lemon pepper, pepper wet. wet. Which okay, since that's the that's the jam in your move, what is when you say lemon pepper wet, what do you mean by that? So we make a dry lemon pepper wing. It's a pink peppercorn, thyme, lemon pepper. Uh, so you know, regular lemon pepper, but jazzed up a little. Um, and then I watched an episode of Atlanta. With Donald Glover? With Donald Glover. Yeah. And during the episode, they were like, the chef cooked up something super special for you. And he goes, oh my god, did he put the lemon pepper with the wet? And I watched it and I went, has anybody done this? <laughs> <laughs> and then I Googled it, and no one had done it yet. So, boom, secret menu. Le lemon day pepper one. wet. It's right. the, you know, so the worst kept secret in Houston, but. The worst kept? Yeah. We deliberately, as, as a nod to Donald Glover, did not put it on the menu. Like, it's not listed as an option. Because in the show, they make a really big deal about, like, they start saying lemon pepper wet out loud, and then everyone's like, shh. Don't tell anyone about the lemon pepper wet. <laughs> oh, let's see it. Let's not let that get out. No. That's delicious. It's delicious. The citric acid in the lemon pepper just kind of hits you on the back end, but otherwise it's, you know, that the front end's buffalo. I heard what wings should aspire to be. All right, Winnie's, what are the go-tos here? The chicken wings, pick a flavor, but the lemon pepper wet, not on the menu, you gotta know. So listen up, order those, I'm telling you right now. Gumbo. Graham says it's the best in the city. That's just because he makes it. But anybody that makes gumbo would argue that fact. I'm going to say it's darn good and you should get it. Shrimp po' boy. Yes, beautiful gulf shrimp. Lots of fallout factor. That's how you judge a good po' boy. Then the fried chicken crunch wrap. We've all had a crunch wrap. You know, going through the drive-thru. Skip the drive-thru. All right, I'm going to get a cocktail. Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah, you want a you wanna whole treasure chest full of them? Yeah, I want to try, yeah, I like to party. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Does this happen all the time? This happens all the time. Yeah. So uh, on Wednesdays you can add a sparkler to anything for two bucks. <laughs> Get by a cheeseburger with a sparkler in it. Yeah. Why I not? mean, that's just festive. I mean, it's not like a two hundred dollar bottle of Vuv either. No. Right. This is like this is twenty bucks. Twenty bucks of happiness. These actually are two kind of good illustrations of what it is we're doing here as far as the cocktails. Uh, I have always loved frozen cocktails. I have always felt like they got a lack of respect. Who doesn't love frozen cocktails? Like frozen margarita is like one of the greatest cocktails yep. ever made. I'm like, it's 110 degrees out. Like give me this cocktail as ice. <laughs> So uh, this is our list of uh, frozens. We always have four frozens. Currently, we've got a frozen tequila sunrise. We've got a frosé. We have got a peach bourbon uh, frozen tea and a Hemingway frozen daiquiri. This is uh, 
a Hemingway daiquiri, which is a, like a sort of like Prohibition era variant on a classic daiquiri. It's got grapefruit, it's got less sugar, and it's got uh, maraschino liqueur. Here. That guy right there. So over here, this is our carbonated flight. So we do a lot of draft cocktails. Make the cocktail, keg it, force carbonate it, and then put it on drafts. So this is uh, Rachel's cocktail. You, you basically said it's a clarified tequila pina colada. It comes pineapple. in a bigger glass if you're yeah, interested. Yeah, I'm gonna need that. <laughs> so she takes pineapple juice, regular pineapple juice, adds citric acid to it so that it becomes as acidic as lemon juice. Then she adds coconut milk to that and the acid curdles it. She strains out the curds and the fat. So what you're left with is like a perfectly clear coconut, pineapple, sour mix. All fresh ingredients. She adds water and tequila and a little bit of sweetener, and then she puts the whole thing in a keg, carbonates it, and puts it on draft. You know who likes that? Yeah, me. <laughs> this is the hurricane. So this is no resemblance, really, to no. that French Quarter hurricane that you're like really kind of regretting. But no, this that was stellar. Our next one's gonna be a perfect example of the same. I mean, this is a hand grenade, which is another Bourbon Street cocktail. Which, if you get down with one of these and one of these in the French Quarter, yeah, you're done. You're done. You're, you're done. done. Check me back in the hotel. Help me get there too. The original Hurricane has tiki roots. Like, there's a good cocktail in there. The original hand grenade, like, man, it's just not a great cocktail. It's not. Like, you want to do it and it's gotta be bright green. So we ended up, this is a, uh, we take kiwi puree and then we clarify it. We add Midori, which actually is like a grape and then you've got vodka, all of it's carbonated. So the kiwi puree is, it sets that apart from everything well, you just said. I, I got lost right there. I mean, that's delightful. I can do this all day. All right, where else are you going to go? Josephine's Gulf Coast Kitchen. Just go stop by and say hi to Lucas, one of the best cooks I've ever met. Coltivari, you're going to see every chef in the city there. They all eat there. And then, of course, crawfish and noodles. Just fantastic food across the board. Even if it's not crawfish season, they've got all the seafood. So Elro and Winnie's, two of my favorite places, just to relax on my day off. I know I'm going to get really good food. I know I'm going to get great service. I know I'm gonna get a great cocktail or a glass of wine. There's places like this all over the city. What's next?